to enjoy some wonderful uh, food from not only Two Boots, but from Baselka and Metropolitan City Market next door. So thank you to all of them as well. And uh, along with all of them, a little bit later, we're going to be hearing from Joshua Light, uh, Joshua White of the Joshua Light Show, uh, as well as Lenny Kay. Be, uh, quite a program we have here tonight. Um, First of all, I just want to uh, mention that this is actually the uh, fifth plaque that GVSHP uh, and Two Boots has installed in the neighborhood. This has been an ongoing program. It's really just in its infancy. We've been doing it for about two years, but we plan on uh, keeping on going. I know there's a lot of folks who are here today who've been at the other unveilings. We're going to have many more in the future, and it's really a wonderful way of celebrating uh, what we love so much about our neighborhood as we fight to preserve it, uh, to keep it the wonderful place that it is, to really celebrate and highlight its history. I'm gonna say a few words about the Fillmore East, but before I do, I just wanna ask everybody who's here who actually went to the Fillmore East <laughs> to raise their hands. Uh-oh. Wow. <laughs> Admitting How many people who are here who just wish they went? <laughs> I have to admit, I was born in 1969, I'm part of that latter group, but even for those of us who were not able to experience it ourselves, we know what an incredibly profound impact this particular music venue had on our, our culture, our, our music, our neighborhood, and so it's really an honor to be a part of this celebration here today. Speaking to the people who were at the Fillmore, there's a couple of things that they say that made it so special. One was that it was just the right size at about 2,700 seats. Uh, another thing that people frequently point to is, of course, the psychedelic light shows, um, the pioneering psychedelic experience that took place here. The fact that in just three short years, and it's incredible given this venue's place in history, how relatively brief uh, it existed, the array of icons who performed here, of course, all of the greats of rock and roll of the era, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, Grateful Dead, Led Zeppelin, The Who, Janis Joplin, really just to name a few. Um, and the other thing that people most frequently uh, talk about when they uh, mention the Fillmore East and its great import is uh, Bill Graham's talent and the force of his personality. He really, of course, shaped uh, the Fillmore East into the incredible venue uh, that it was. He, of course, not only uh, founded the Fillmore East, but the Fillmore, which became the Fillmore West, out in San Francisco. Um, Bill Graham was an innovator in so many ways, um, not just with the music shows, but he also gave back a lot as well. Uh, the Fillmore East was frequently the site of political and social fundraisers. Uh, on weeknights, uh, Bill gave over the theater to neighborhood groups for benefit performances and things of that nature. Um, and that really tells us a little bit about what this place was and who the people were behind it. Um, just to give you a little background on Bill, which in some ways reflects a lot about the history of this neighborhood, Bill was actually born in Berlin in 1931, 
to Russian parents. He came to America as a child to escape uh, Nazism. He grew up to be the consummate businessman, passionate, demanding, fair, and successful, a friend to artists, an innovator. He really encouraged and nurtured the light show experience here. And uh, as many of you know, he really was the forerunner in developing the psychedelic concert poster. Um, sadly, he was only 60 years old when he died in a helicopter accident in 1991. But he could not have picked a better spot than this for the Fillmore East, as this was a building that was really built to entertain. It opened its doors in 1926 as a Yiddish theater, and it was one of many that lined Second Avenue, which was then known as the Yiddish Rialto. Shortly after it became the Lowe's Commodore Movie House, eventually morphing into the Village Theater, which offered a variety of movies and live acts, some in Yiddish, some in English. But then from 19, March 1968 to June of 1971, it became the Fillmore East, which we're here today to celebrate. After that, it was dark for a time, and then it became the Saint in the 1980s, which we've heard a lot about recently from folks as we've uh, 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 announced the plaque unveiling as well, which really uh, defined the 1980s as well in terms of being a pioneering gay nightclub of that era. The brief life of the film world was so powerful that it's already been commemorated in some very important ways. Um, the corner, of course, was uh, named Bill Brown Way in 1994. There are some wonderful collages and photos inside the bank of the Fillmore East. Of course, we have a wonderful light pole mosaic by Jim Powers, who's here today as well. But with the plaque that we're going to unveil today, we hope in a very visible and permanent way we will commemorate uh, and celebrate one of the really defining and iconic uh, music venues and cultural institutions of the 1960s and 1960s, uh, 1970s for this neighborhood, for New York, and really for the world. Um, and today is not just about looking back, but looking ahead. This continues to be one of the most vibrant, dynamic neighborhoods and communities in all of New York. And part of that is about the fact that we remember our history, we continue to innovate, we continue to be a community that uh, really celebrates these wonderful things about the arts and music and culture. And today is really about celebrating that wonderful tradition. So I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. And the next in our uh, pretty uh, considerable roster of speakers is Connie Martin, the Apple Bank Director, Director of Marketing. Connie. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'd like to uh, especially thank Andrew and Karen Lowe and the rest of the team at the Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation, uh, as well as Phil Hartman, um, Tom Bershara, um, Lenny Kay, and um, the rest of the team of, oh, I, I can't forget the New Yorker supermarket next door, they have donated the beverages uh, for uh, all of their help in making this happen. Uh, but you know, as I look around and as I talk to the crowd here, I'm just awed by the generations of people who live in this neighborhood. And what a wonderful neighborhood this remains, you know, even as it started. So let's hear it for the neighborhood. Let me Yay! Okay, um, I also want to recognize um, um, uh, Mr. Erdman, who uh, is here, and he was part of the original construction crew of the Fillmore, and he's here in a big yellow shirt. There he is. And of course, uh, I also want to recognize Mr. Jim Power for those wonderful mosaics uh, as I have uh, cruised the neighborhood. Fantastic, Jim. Way to go. Uh, so anyway, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the Fillmore. You know, I came here back in the day to see Joe Cocker and Iron Butterfly. And of course, Led Zeppelin was the opening group for Iron Butterfly. Can you believe that? It was just amazing. And, you know, when I think of the groups that got their start here, you know, Jimi Hendrix, yes. Uh, when I think of the groups that got their start here, um, one group especially comes to mind. 
and they just finished playing at the Beacon last night. That would be the Allman Brothers, the founders of Southern Rock, who also got their start there. Everybody remember Live at Fillmore East? That was the album that gave them their big start and catapulted them to international fame. So of course when we heard that they were going to be in town, we called them to invite them to this ceremony. Unfortunately, they had to leave this morning, but they were kind enough to give me a statement, which I would like now to read to all of you. The Allman Brothers Band's Home Away From Home was the Fillmore East. The theater and its proprietor, our lifelong friend and supporter, Bill Graham, were instrumental in launching our career and creating the legacy that continues to live 45 years later, now at the Beacon Theater. We are forever grateful for Bill Graham, the Phil Maurice Theater and its staff, and most importantly, our fans, who keep coming out night after night to share our passion for music. This dedication is long overdue for this temple of rock, whose location is a shrine for all who ever attended or listened to our seminal at Fillmore East. And this comes from the Allman Brothers Band, their families, and the crew. So let's hear it from the Allman Brothers. All right. And let's hope that they like you Rolling Stones, this is not their last performance. Okay. So when we think of great times at the Fillmore, we also think of another great rock festival. And that is Woodstock. Okay, and we are very proud and happy to have with us tonight Ms. Jennifer Roberts, who is the daughter of John Roberts, one of the co-founders of Woodstock, and of course, at which many of the Fillmore greats also played. Jennifer, give us a wave. Jennifer is here, I know. But anyway, welcome Jennifer, we're happy to have you. She's a partner in Woodstock Ventures. I see somebody pointing. Jennifer, okay. So now I'd like to introduce another star. And this is a neighborhood star who many of you know. She's the branch manager of this branch. She's yeah. lived here for over 20 years and worked here for over 20 years. Christina Sobunka. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anna, for uh, such a nice introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my speech is going to be very short. It's starting to rain, so I don't want to keep you too long and so you don't get wet. I would like to welcome everyone here today. It is our pleasure to host this event. The Fillmore East has a rich history and is proudly remembered by many that attended the concerts here. Most on a daily, most, almost on a daily basis, we have visitors that stop by our branch to look at the display of photographs and collages that we have on hand. Some of them share their memories of the performances here. Others go further back, telling stories on when it was part of the Yiddish theater. On behalf of my staff at Second Avenue and Apple Bank, we are honored to share space with such an important piece of entertainment history. Thank you to Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation for working to install this beautiful flag, which will be enjoyed by New Yorkers and all the visitors from all around. Thank you so much to Mr. Tom Herschel from the Selka Restaurant, Michael and Stephen Schumacher from the New Yorker Supermarket, and the Two Boots Foundation for their generous uh, donations of food and drinks that we will enjoy today. Thank you very much. Enjoy. So uh, now I'd like to ask uh, our partner in this endeavor, uh, Phil Hartman from Two Boots, to come up and speak. All right. Yeah, Phil. All right. Yeah. Well, I just want to reiterate uh, how great it is to work with Andrew and Karen and the GBSHP. Um, we look forward to doing this for um, for many years. As Andrew says, uh, we always want to emphasize how important it is for us to keep cultivating the next generation, the next Joplin, the next Hendrix, the next Joshua Light Show, um, because we want to stay a vibrant community. We want to be looking ahead, not always backwards. So I am here just to introduce the three speakers that we have coming up, and they're all pretty amazing, so I hope everybody sticks around for a minute. 
Um, I'm going to introduce them all three at once, and then they'll come up one after the other. We're going to start with Joshua White, who is the founder of the Joshua Light Show. And, uh, if you were there back then, or if you weren't, you have to understand that the light show was as important a part of the experience as the music on the stage. So it's really exciting to have him here tonight. Um, Josh is right there. He's going to come first. Hang on. And then following Josh is going to be a dear old friend of mine, Tom from uh, Celta. And Tom actually is going to talk about his experience of losing his sense of hearing back in the day. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And then. Uh, we're going to end with Lenny Kay, and Lenny Kay actually deserves a plaque of his own to be put on his back or chest. And uh, Lenny, as many of you know, has been um, part of the Patti Smith group for many, many years. But Lenny's talents and experiences go way beyond that. Lenny's a brilliant performer on his own, author, rock historian. This general great So, as you can see, he's got an uh, instrument in his hand, and we're going to hear from Lenny at the end of the show. Stick around for the food, there's pizza coming, and food from Zelda, etc. Thanks, Josh. This is wonderful. Thank you very much. The, um, the, the Fillmore was. Uh, was lucky because we already had a Fillmore in California, which was Gabriel Graham, the opportunity to uh, to to make money. <laughs> he made money in at the Fillmore in California, and so when he came to New York, which he didn't want to do, he had to talk him into it. Uh, he has he had the, the, the wherewithal to buy the theater. And, uh, and, and put the kind of shows on that he really wanted to do. He also was very attracted to the fact that in New York, we were very disciplined. In New York, it was a theater, so we sat down and watched the show. It was in Francisco, it was a ball. And there's another little tiny thing which is kind of wonderful is that many of the people that uh, worked at the Fillmore initially, We'd all done work before. Uh, people who had set up theaters and already you know the person already came back out and they would get all the money. And then we were teaching at Tisch School of the Arts, which is right this school. So not only did we have a really good people, but we had a whole bunch of stagehands and other people who all were not just theater professionals, but masters. Master of people have masters The combination of Bill's immaculate taste uh, for booking ads, the fact that there was a very, very fine crew here who could do it, the fact that we were so young, uh, just gave us a chance to, to do stuff that had to be done. Bill realized early on that if he had a band, that would sell out, and he could do whatever he wanted for the opening and the middle of that. So that gave him license to bring in the kind of music that the movie audience had to see. Uh, it was kind of wonderful Latin music, big band music, all kinds of interesting performers. And we did a light show behind all of them. He treated the light show with great respect. Uh, if you should, I appreciate the fact that we existed before the film bar. And, uh, and it was just a wonderful, a wonderful event experience. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see you here today. I'm thrilled that, that two folks have honored um, this building. And then we're there. Or at least you know about us. We are there. How, how unusual. Thank 
you everyone for coming. Uh, I'm surprised to see so many people who are actually open to the there's so many uh, senior, senior citizens. Uh, I want to thank Bill, thank Bill for inviting me. I want to thank many of the students at Rutgers University in the 60s. And um, he had the premier interpretive parties here on the floor, bands at Rutgers. So whenever we do many. So this this particular ceremony, this unveiling has special meaning for me because when I first started at the Silicon Valley Art College, um, the Como East opened. Yeah, and uh, since I was a big fan of the music and was kind of emerging in the modern culture and character of the world. I was here every weekend. She's just taking a picture. Whenever possible, I try to get tickets for the late show. It's our event. Those shows tend to come later. Uh, you got more music for your money, and occasionally a surprise guest would come and sit in. So I have, I, have, I, have, I have a lot of fun here, a lot of pleasant memories. Even though, even, even though it was only here for three years, um, the, the, the place and the concerts had a tremendous impact, not only on, not only on me, but on our culture um, in general. The, the many of the groups who performed here sang protest songs, anti-war songs, and those songs resonated with the younger generation, but eventually, well, it gave us the notion that maybe perhaps we could change the world. We gained power by being together in this venue. Yeah. And eventually, eventually, we do along with God. Eventually, we did bring an end to the Vietnam War. We basically discouraged Mindy Johnson from running into the president. And, uh, uh, the music was not only entertaining, but had a very good impact. So, uh, Andrew mentioned that I lost part of my hearing here. I say that partially in jest. But the, the sound system here was incredibly good. I was looking at the whole plan. We saw about 49 minutes of the show. And I did not comment that I could hear some of my hearing records. I'm glad that the next year or two would probably see me a little bit of a screen in the end. But it was, it was totally perfect. This, this was a, a great experience. And I'm very happy to be here when I can share with you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I have the pleasure of being here on opening night of the film one. Well back uh, in the last century. Big Brother and Holding Company. Who as you can see, I modeled myself after Sam Andrews. And uh, Tim Buckley. I saw Neil Young here. I saw the crazy world of Arthur Brown here. I was here. When it was the film, uh, when it was the Village Theater, and I saw the Who in Full Glory and the Sea and the Vanilla Fudge, and all I can remember thinking in those times was how wonderful it would be for me to be on that stage, and I guess I finally made it. I also thank here, and I'd like to thank uh, all the. Uh, I have been doing so since uh, way back when. I'm going to play a little song now. I don't know the words, so this fine lady here has uh, said that she would hold it up for me. And there's three pages, so I, uh, you know. But I remember the moment when I heard this song on the stage of the film Get out of here. Uh, at about 4 o'clock in the morning, one summer in uh, 1969, 70 maybe, the Grateful Dead were finishing a very long set, and I was in the middle of a very long acid trip. <laughs> and I just rode home thinking about this song and never dreaming that I would be able to sing it here. It's a wonderful theater, it's got a lot of great history, and in this beautiful part of the neighborhood, uh, it's great to have it remembered. Thank you for the uh, Greenwich Village uh, 
Preservation Society and uh, Bill Hartman and, and all of you people for coming out to celebrate a great rock venue, a wonderful holy site. That might help, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody stand back. Don't you worry anymore. Cause when life looks like he's a street, there is danger at your door. Think this through with me. Let me know your mind. Oh, oh, what I want to know. Oh, is all you kind. I'd like to thank uh, Leon Hartman for giving me that little fiddle introduction there. Yeah. It's a buck dancer's choice, my friend. Better take my advice. You know all the rules by now and the fire from the eyes. Will you come with me? Won't you come with me? Oh, oh, what I want to know Will you come with me? God damn, will I declare Have you seen the light? The walls are built of cannonballs Their motto is don't tread on me Come here Uncle John's band Play into the tide Come with me or go alone He's come to take his children home it's the same story, the words to say It's the only one he knows Like the morning sun you come And like the wind you blow Ain't no time to hate Barely time to wait Oh, oh what I want to know oh, where does the time go? Take it, Leon. that taught us how to sing that song. So I want to hear everybody who knows the word. Come here, Uncle John's band, pay into the time. Got some things to talk about here beside the rising tide. Come here, Uncle John's band, play into the time. Come along and go along He's come to take his children home Come here, Uncle John's band By the riverside Got some things to talk about Here on the lower east side Come here, Uncle John's band by the riverside. Got some things to talk about here on the Lower East Side. For you fellas, you gotta love it. Who's our neighborhood? Leon Hyman, Jimmy 
Preservation Society. Apple Bank. 0.75 interest. <laughs> that was truly awesome. Thank you so much, Lenny and Leon. And uh, now, basically, is the finale. We're gonna we're gonna do the unveiling. So I'm gonna ask uh, Phil and the folks from Apple Bank and Tom and Lenny and Leon and everybody to join us. We're gonna take the uh, uh, we're gonna take the covering off and we're gonna reveal it to the world. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. One side. Thank you. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. So, oh, the umbrella. Drum, drum roll, please. The umbrella. <laughs> there we go. There it is. So, and for those of you who can't see, uh, it says the site of the Fillmore East, 1968 to 1971. Fans of live rock, folk, and blues music stream through this entrance during the brief but memorable life of the Fillmore East. The great concert promoter Bill Graham brought The Who, Jimi Hendrix, Jonas Joplin, The Grateful Dead, and many more into a concert hall beloved by artists and audiences alike for its intimacy, acoustics, and psychedelic light shows. So, <laughs> so um, thank you everybody so much for participating today. And you know, in addition to this plaque, as many of you know, this whole, the whole area surrounding this building and including this building is now a designated New York City Historic District. So this will, this will never be torn down. This will always be here. We'll always be able to uh, celebrate and remember this wonderful history. Yeah.